Um, without any further delay, we would like to move on to our next segment. Um, and I would like to give away our vote of thanks to our grant sponsor, Mr. Amit Mathru from Chugla Firm. Amit is an attorney uh, in the Chugla Firm uh, from Northern California office. His practices consist of representing companies in commercial and technology transactions, corporate governments, and general corporate counselings of private and public companies. Speaking of his education, uh, Amit has a law degree and an MBA from Santa Clara University, as well as a bachelor's degree from UCLA. I would like to call Amit on stage and say a few words about Chugla Firm and um, what, what, is, what is their work and what do they do in, your, in their normal life. Normal work hours. Amit, please come up on the stage. Thank you. Uh, so, um, I've come here to, to talk about you know how to limit your personal liability for um, the business ventures that you engage in. As previously mentioned, you know the Chick firm is a full service law office as well as an accounting firm. I'm an attorney in our Santa Clara office. I do corporate transactional work. Uh, so one thing that I always hear at you know these conventions as well as speaker series is that it's okay to fail in Silicon Valley. You're expected to fail. You're going to make lots of mistakes. It's okay. Just learn from them and have a successful pivot. Learn that wor what works and you know move on. Uh, and that's all very good advice, right? But from a legal standpoint, you know your failures do matter and they can be held against you. So you want to fail in a way that limits your personal liability um, and you from being held personally accountable for those failures. So what I'm gonna do today is talk about how you can fail safe and um, any mistakes that you make um, can be done in a manner where you're not held personally liable. So about the Chug Fern, we have five offices here in the US, five offices in India, uh, we have lots of attorneys and CPAs who can help with any legal or accounting needs you may have. All right, so your, your typical startup is composed of, you know, individuals who may know each other well, they may not know each other well. Sometimes they'll be composed of people who meet at events like this, uh, and you only know your, your co-founders for maybe a year or so. Um, many of them may not actively be involved in the company itself, so they may not really be aware of what's going on. They're just a director, uh, and they're not really involved in day-to-day -day operations. Even though you may not be involved in the day-to-day -day operations, you're still responsible for you know, making sure things are done properly, and you still have uh, potential risk exposure. So you still want to conduct business in a way that you're protected, um, as well as you know, this may be the first venture for many of the, the people involved. So it's very likely that mistakes will be made along the way. Um, so that creates basically the question, you know, how do you act in a manner where you can limit your risk exposure and yourself from being held personally accountable from some of the mistakes that are made along the way? So there's four basic ways that you can limit your, your personal liability. Uh, one is to include limitations of liability in your Articles of Incorporation or Certificate of Incorporation. You may have done this already, you may not have. Uh, it depends, you know, whether you had an attorney do the work or not. Um, I'm not going to be talking about that because, you know, it, you have either done it or you haven't. The, another way is uh, by getting written indemnification provided by the company to officers or directors. Uh, a third way is director and officer insurance policies. So you may have bought the insurance, you may not have. If you're a startup, you probably saved money. You didn't buy the insurance, you're brave. Um, and then the fourth way to, to limit your personal liability is what's called the business judgment rule. And that's what I will be talking about today. Um, this is basically something that's free, that's uh, you know something that's a matter of law. So you just need to basically comply with certain requirements and you'll be afforded the protection of the business judgment rule, which will limit your personal risk ex exposure. So what is the business judgment rule? The business judgment rule is a rebuttable presumption that uh, the director or officer acted on an informed basis in good faith and with the best interests of the corporation in mind. Right? Uh, the reason why it's important is because then in a lawsuit, uh, the person suing yourself would have to prove that you did not act in this manner. Right? And the benefit of having this presumption is that 
a judge would not second guess your business decisions, right? And you don't want a judge to second guess any of your business decisions because one, a judge is not a business person. They don't know, you know, what's a good de decision or not. As well as when you look back at any decision, like it's easy to see where things went wrong, right? So that's why you want to have, you know, the protection of the business judgment rule. But in order to get these protections, you basically need to do certain things. So what do you need to do in order to get the protection? Basically, all you need to do is comply with your fiduciary duties, which, you know, many startup founders don't know what their duties are because, you know, this is their first enterprise. Uh, basically, you have three duties. One is a duty of care. Uh, the second is a duty of loyalty. The third is a duty of good faith and fair dealing. Um, what a duty of care is, is it means that you're going to act basically like a reasonable business person would in your situation. Right? So what that means is you're going to conduct due diligence on transactions, you're going to learn the risks involved, and you're going to make informed decisions. Uh, the duty of loyalty is you're going to put the best interests of the corporation and stockholders above your own personal interests, uh, which sounds easier than it actually is in practice. Right? Because when operating your, your companies, you're going to have many competing constituents. You know, you have your shareholders, your employees, vendors, creditors, contract counterparties, and they all have their own interests, um, some of which may be aligned with yours, some may be divergent, and uh, the difference between the two might depend on the exact transaction, right? Um, but the way that, you know, corporate law is in the United States is the corporation is meant to be run in the benefit of the shareholders, um, and that can be the long-term benefit, not just short-term. You can do things that don't make sense in the short term so long as they're directed at long-term value creation. You know, you can uh, operate your, your business in a manner that, you know, such that it's a green business, uh, which may increase, you know, your, your cost of doing business. Um, so long as, you know, you can justify it on, you know, consumers being more attracted to your business because of its um, nature. And then the, the third duty that officers and directors have to, to comply with is the duty of good faith and fair dealing. Uh, this is often actually portrayed as a subset of the duty of loyalty. Um, so I won't really be talking too in depth about it. it. Basically, the analysis varies based on the court system you're in. How do you comply with you know, these fiduciary obligations that you have uh, in order to get the protections of the business judgment rule? Basically, there's four very easy takeaways. Uh, one is to identify potential duty of loyalty considerations. Um, so when, whenever you enter into a transaction, if you have any conflict of interest, you know, you should disclose it to your other directors and officers so that the non-conflicted directors and officers know what's going on. Um, so let's say you're going to enter into a transaction with you know, a family friend or a relative you know, you would want the other directors and officers to be aware that you have an existing personal relationship with that person uh, and that it may impact your ability to engage in negotiations with them, right? And just so that it's out on the table, right, then everyone can make an informed decision about whether it still makes sense. And then there's no issue in the future about you engaging in any self-dealing or, you know, taking money from the, the corporation itself, right? So having everything out in the open is, is one way of you know, meeting your fiduciary obligations. Uh, and that is basically going towards your, your duty of, of loyalty and acting in the best interest of, of the corporation. Uh, even if there is a, a, a transaction where you have a conflict of interest, let's say you're selling something to the business, uh, so long as you get the other directors and officers to approve it, you know, there's not really an issue. So the, the second takeaway is you know, collect all relevant information uh, about potential transactions as reasonably possible. Review the information carefully. Uh, seek the advice of experts to ensure that you have a complete understanding of uh, the materials being presented and the transaction. So basically conduct due diligence, understand what you're getting into, and understand and appreciate that, you know, as entrepreneurs, you may not fully understand, you know, what what the transaction is in front of you, and you may need expert advice, right? That might be from lawyers, bankers, or accountants. 
And practically what that means is, you know, like if you're looking at purchasing something or selling an asset, you know, you might want to speak to an investment banker about getting a valuation or as well as an accountant, right? So that you know the price you're paying is fair, right? Because uh, you want all this documentation in your corporate records, right? Showing that you conducted this diligence so that if there is a lawsuit, um, it's clear that you acted reasonably. You basically got estimates about pricing um, so that you're not held accountable, personally accountable, for not acting um, and engaging in your, your fiduciary obligations, as well as you know, consulting lawyers like myself, uh, so that you understand the documents involved in transactions and that they actually reflect what you think they what you're agreeing to, right? Because many times, you know, these contracts are written not in straightforward English, and you want to make sure that they reflect, you know, your understanding. Uh, so the th third takeaway is to investigate uh, assumptions and information provided to you. Certainly, you know, directors are allowed to rely on information presented to them by management, but you are still required to, um, you know, probe and test the assumptions and um, do so such that you know, you've at least tested their accuracy, veracity, and completeness, right? You need to know where the information you're relying on, what information you're relying on, what the source was, and what assumptions are involved, right? In order to make an, any informed decision, right? Uh, the fourth takeaway is to consider uh, what options you have and to discuss them thoroughly, right? And all of these discussions in, in boards should be uh, documented in, in meeting minutes. Uh, the meeting minutes don't have to be detailed, but they should show that there was some robust discussion about transactions uh, and that both the pros and cons were discussed, right? So that if any issue does pop up in the future, it's clear that, you know, an informed decision was made and that, you know, you talked about both the risks and the rewards and, you know, the, the directors and officers determined that the risks or the reward outweighed any potential risks. So those are basically the takeaways on, you know, how to comply with your fiduciary duties. Um, I mean, many small companies, people don't comply with these because, you know, they're not involved on a daily basis. Uh, and they may, um, they may feel that other people are handling them, but you can't um, shirk or you know, waive these responsibilities. And you want to comply with them so that uh, your own personal liability is limited, right? And that you have acted reasonably. So basically, if you comply with these four you know, takeaways, you'll most likely have complied with your duty of loyalty, duty of uh, uh, good faith and fair dealing, and duty of um, duty of due care, uh, which will then afford you the protection of the business judgment rule and the court wouldn't second, just, second guess your business decisions. All right, uh, if you guys have any questions, I think I'm, I'm out of time. I think I may have run a little late. But if you have any questions, feel free to, to talk to me afterwards uh, about this as well as any other issues you may be facing. I'm, I'm happy to talk to, to any of you. Um, and then, you know, about our firm in general, we provide uh, a wide variety of, of legal and accounting services and, you know, more than just corporate um, legal services. And, you know, if you ever want to contact us, you know, my email address is, is on the, the slide deck uh, and I'll be outside. Uh, as I said, you know, we have an office here in Santa Clara, which I work out of, and then there's five other offices or there's five offices in the U.S. and five in India, right? Uh, I look forward to, to hearing about uh, PitchFest. Thank you, everyone.